Do we have Connie on the line? Good morning, Connie. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Tell me why you want to talk to us this morning. I want to um to bring to a uh, understanding that has been being circulated in the public as it relates to the Damian Crawford conversation um, with myself and um, Damian and Pat. Oh, um, you 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 are the Connie in that now infamous conversation that was leaked and went yes. viral. Yes, you, I am. You were Connie. Yes. Yes. So did you leak the tape of the recorded conversation? Well, um, before the campaign um, took shape, um, the presidential um, campaign, um, Damien Crawford um, was thinking of throwing his hat in the ring and it kind of started a certain kind, it sparked a certain kind of negative comments about him. Damien and I must say for, for everyone is my friend and still remains my friend. Um, however, when things got, got, got more intense in the, in the campaign, I was exposed to a line of conversation um, by one of my um, comrades, uh, not in the leadership of the campaign, about some untoward things that um, it was being alleged that Damon was doing as it relates to Comrade Mark Golden. Because of my knowledge as to where Damon um, was at the time, and I did not believe what I was hearing, I, you know, I left that bigger space. And uh, when, it, when it was private, I spoke with two of my very close political friends um, who I personally um, had confidence in that in defending Damien on the ground, they, um, listening to what Damien said to me was important for them to hear. At the time, my judgment was that it was not anything of any great privacy because Damien had shared similar sentiments with many other persons. Mm -hmm. And yes, I did, but I did not share the information in any mass distribution, and this took place almost two months plus ago. So it, I, I really lost myself for what has caused this to happen at this time when it came out. So let me see if I follow you. You had that conversation with Damien, uh -huh. Pat, and Pat. Yes. You recorded the conversation, uh -huh. and you shared it with the two close political allies of yours. Yeah. Right. And then, what happened after that? Well, the, 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 you know, we went through the campaign, and Comrade Mark Golden um, won. The election was over, and I returned to work. I was off from work um, for the campaign. Um, I was on my way home on Friday before the, before the NEC when I was called and um, told about a voice note that is being circulated and my voice, Pat and Damien, is in it. Um, then after that, I got a call from somebody else saying there is another voice note with my communication with somebody else in it. I found it very, very strange. So I reached out to Pat immediately, and she was telling me also about the um, the Damien communication with ourselves that is out there. I was lost. I spoke to Damien immediately. Um, we all were lost at times. I mean, I was looking in different directions. I uh, he was looking in different directions. Um, I could not have believed that someone who I would have perceived to be um, not, uh, not, who would not carry out careless acts, would have been the person. So I had dismissed any of the two persons that I had that discussion with. 
I only made call to one, and he openly said no, he could never do that, and there was no per reason or purpose for him to carry out such a malicious attack on anybody. Um, the election came. So hold on, um, Connie. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're, we're trying to follow what's ha what happened. Mm -hmm. Why did you tape the conversation? One. Well, uh -huh. I I have an app on my phone. It's actually a device that uh, monitors both my ins and outs, you know, and it tracks my vehicle and it it, it, it tracks conversation. This happened because about. Almost three years ago, I had a life-threatening situation relating to politics, and from that, I decided that I would always protect myself in the event that anything happened, you know, um, persons could have an idea as to what took place. A lot of persons know about it, and a lot of persons know that the, the app is on my phone. It's not a secret. Um, that is something that is a, a sneaking act. It's not a secret. A lot of persons in the region know and within my constituency. But certainly they men didn't know. But they men didn't know. didn't know. As close as they were, I don't I don't know um how he didn't know. All right. So you taped it and you, why did you decide to share it with those two individuals who are close to you politically? By the way, you're a Golding supporter. Yes, I am. Why did you decide to share it with them as against them listening to it? but not sharing it with them? Um, one of the persons um, that I shared it with was actually the person who was one of the aggressor um, towards Damien. And I wanted um, to, not, you know, to tell him basically to back up, you know? What he's saying um, is not... Back, back up or back off, Damien? Back up. <laughs> back oh, okay. off. Mm. Um, what he's saying is actually not factual. And I believed um, in my own judgment that it would have been best if uh, we don't um, provoke and try to make more mischief for each other. So if what we don't have facts, so we don't leave. So it was just, it was just used in a means to defend my friend because I, I was in the, the presence of what was happening at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those two who then circulated it and it went viral after yes and why did that person say circulated widely after well um what was communicated to me is that um uh, when i started to do other checks um as you see currently um information out um i had i was calling around sending emails to everybody and whatsapp trying to understand what was happening and what had caused this and in that, um, in that, I discovered that one of our former parliamentarians, uh, who was one of the person I shared it with, um, shared it with somebody who did a mass distribution of it. Um, I was told, I don't have any facts to support it, but I was told that at the time, the, it was alleged that Damien was being... Um, anti um comrade Dayton and comrade Angela and he was campaigning against them and because of that um that person decided to use it as an attack on him. An attack on Damien? Yes. Wow. So when you realized that this was damaging Damien, what did you do? Well the first thing I did I, I reached out to the, the, the former um MP and um you know, I asked him because I didn't want I didn't want to get any more second hand information. I asked him, he he basically said yes he shared it uh with somebody and yes he's aware that it was sent out and he will take responsibility, you know, basically he will man up. Um I spoke with him and I explained to him we have been speaking straight through the whole process, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, just just trying to assist each other through this period. Um, I, I I I also sent the information um, to the general secretary. I told him what was happening, how I felt, and what I discovered. And I was advised that the party would have dealt with it internally. 
um, my decision to go public is that that has not been done yet and the situation still remains in the public and persons are forming various um, um, impressions and come to various conclusions and I think it is my time to speak. Including you are being condemned. I understand that clearly. You are being condemned. But you said you reached out because you were under pressure. Yes? When you reached out to Damien, what did you say to him? What, what, what did you, how did that go? Well, you know, initially, um, you know, Damien was more um, than Connie. Can you? Can you? Um, you know, he would have trusted me with everything. Um, he understands my point and that the position that I was in, that I was really defending him. But um, he, he said I was defending him. I could have told them what he said instead of share, um, which I understand. And, um, you know, he... I mean, there are times when he got very angry, and in, in, in you know, in our communication, we, we, we basically had a little, a little, a little toss up, like you know, control because you know, in, in, in holding on to certain um, positions, um, positions that I cannot um, support on my own without any more facts. But I understand where he is. I understand what he's feeling because I, I mean, I was detained at home throughout this whole period not even knowing how to deal with it myself. So I could understand for him, the person who has to know, face everybody, you know, the country and all. So I, I, I do understand uh, where, he, where he is and where he is currently. Yes, he, his position is understandable. Yes, he's yeah. been badly damaged by this. We're up on mm -hmm. the break, Connie. Hold on, because his story took another turn. Eyes were clear and bright. I walk in the ideology of the party. The most. And when people are saying these are popular, she has never gotten the cheer when we get when we come out and pay a visit. She has never gotten the adoration when we get when we are the regular people. Never. At least when I get the cheer where Dayton Campbell get when he reach out and pay a visit. Anything. How that popularity in a transition to anything else? I, I mean, Mark is the most ready for the next two years. But election is not the next two years. And we can't change again. Yeah. That's the unfortunate reality of the rest We can't, nobody can come two years and come say, oh, we're ready now. No, but we no, but we're never going from them long time then. That was Damon Crawford on tape recorded without his knowledge in a conversation with Pat and a Connie. Connie is with us because she says she wants to tell her side of the story. Yes? Connie? I'm here. Good. The story took another turn this week when a series Two posts purportedly done by Peter Bunting on this matter, right, started circulating. In one of the posts, or one of the posts read, good morning, I really don't trust some people because of past experience. Hence, over the years, conference calls with persons I don't trust, I record to protect myself. This recording is one such as Pat was on the line, and I didn't want to be left opened. Also, I really wanted to get DC, that's Damien Crawford, to support us and bury the past. He's my good friend. What was done by JS, whoever that is, I don't know, has affected me immensely, and I really cannot defend myself. Just feeling lost because I'm now being called all manner of names for things I did not do. I will hold my cool for the better of the party, but just sharing with you. Was that written by you? Yes, it was. And what were you doing in reaching out to Peter Bunting in that manner? At that time, I was at my lowest. I, I reached out to um, 
Comrade Peter Benton, um, and also Comrade Dayton, and other persons in the leadership, because I did not have the answers. Um, but what I was doing is letting them know um, the, how the damage has affected me, and um, what it has done also to my friendship. Um, that, was, that was just what that was, because at that time I had decided to do my own investigation uh, with the passing days. I know how our, our party is and how things go with the pieces that I will put together, you know, as we go along. So I was just reaching out to Comrade Peter Bontin um, in that communication to him. And then you say thanks. And he responds, the consolation is that the public release was quite valuable, in my opinion as it exposes Crawford for the malignant narcissist he is. Strategically, it provokes the pro-golding faction, will be stirred to crush the Crawford rebellion before further disunity mushrooms. Did he write that? Bunting, that is. Did he yes, write he did. that? Yes, he did. And then he says, and tactically, it precipitated Crawford's absence on Sunday's NEC where he had planned to be Raymond's floor manager. Taking him out of the game was helpful in a close GS contest. GS, I take it, general secretary contest. In fact, it was a Machiavellian masterstroke. Not that I would have advocated it, but it nevertheless had a serendipitous political outcome. Did he write that? Yes, he did. That speaks to the problem, part of the bitterness in the party. Here is Peter Bunting speaking this way of Damien. Doesn't it look bad on Bunting here? And when I when I first read it, um, I it didn't come across to me as being um, bad. I, I think because I, you know, when you understand how the person communicates, um, you just accept them for, for that person. What was important, more important to me in that communication mm -hmm. is that he said he did not sanction it and you would not have done any such. Um, Damien, my, my friend, I love him dearly, but Damien plays rough ball when it comes to campaigning an election. So all of those descriptives and all of that, I think, was more in relation to not um, not having a Damien on the floor at the time to do all of these things. Even though he wasn't aware of it, you know, the outcome of it was that Damien wasn't there to, you know, to to, to um, campaign, you know, in a in in, in, a, in a in a in a way that would probably had caused um, a loss for our Gen Six based on what it's saying. But I don't think it is anything with any animosity, any great animosity, because I've seen Comrade Damian and Comrade Bunting working together. Uh, to, you know, the public might not see that. There are, there are different perceptions out there, which I cannot speak to because I don't have the facts. But immediately, I, I did not see um, enemy mm -hmm. in the communication. Yeah. But how did this conversation between you and Bunting got out you know um i had made a commitment to myself that in clearing this whole situation with myself and damien um whatever information whatever we'll sh i'll share it with him um what the public might not have um have known is that um it's not a secret i had said to Comrade Peter Bunting that I share with Damien everything, um, you know, everything um, that I found out, everything that I heard, everything that I knew, because I wanted him to understand that there was no malicious attack on him by me. And in my, as far as I know, um, I don't know of any other malicious attack on him from the Golden Team outside of somebody who was just another supporter of the Golden Team who has already agreed that this is the person who did it. So, Damien and others have been making much of this exchange between you and Bunting, yes? 
to mm -hmm. say that this, in fact, Damon in a statement yesterday says it has been brought to my attention that screenshots which reveal okay. an underhanded plot, underhanded plot to assist the efforts of a candidate to gain power within the party is being circulated in the public space. Is that so? It's an underhanded well, and, plot. And as it relates to um, it being circulated in the public space, that in all my communications were directed um, to Damian Crawford. Um, as it relates to that particular one, um, I'm not sure how it got in, in, in your hands. Um, I think only Damian could answer that. Well, he sent he, he he brought it to my attention. Okay, all right. He brought it to my attention. But what I'm asking you, he makes much of this. Says it's an underhanded plot to assist the efforts of a candidate to gain power in the party. He has directed this evidence to the party leader for his intervention, and then he makes a comment: these screenshots should be of great concern to every member of the PNP as the same underhanded attempts have been made to sully the character of Norman Horn by leaking outdated emails to give, to give a false impression to the public. Then they buttress this clandestine effort by the assertions of paid bloggers. You realize how far this has gone now? Yes, and um, Mr. Hughes, I can only speak on what I know and um, I cannot speak on where Damien headspace is as it relates to um, making um, references to what has happened with um, Comrade Norman Horn either. But what I know for sure is from the get-go, Damien was adamant that I, I was used in a way because I did not understand. And he was angry because he believed that I... Um, they were a part of the team, and where I played from, they did not even consider me in trying to hurt him. He personally believed that other elements, um, there are other elements, you know, that I'm not aware of, and I will not um, take away those views from him because he's entitled to his own opinion. Um, I, however, cannot that I have discovered categorically in any way where I can say that there are other persons who were a part of it. Um, I had meeting with Comrade Bunting after, and he he was he was as hurt as me for what took place. He had nothing to do with it; would never be a part of anything of that nature. I also had meeting with the General Secretary, Comrade Dayton Campbell, and he was in the same position. As a matter of fact, he said, Connie Damon is my friend. I would never support that. I would never do that. So sometimes, you know, um, I think while we hurt and while there are situations that um, happen, uh, we are, while we're searching for answers, you know, a lot of things seem, you know, it seems like it matches. But um, sometimes I think we just have to work with what we have until we have more. So, let me ask you this. There's a 19-minute a conversation that is now on Facebook. It has come to my attention with you and a former MP, Joylan Silvera, where the two of you knocked heads on this very matter. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Well, that, um, the, the, the conversation, I am sure... Um, the public would understand what was taking place. Um, that conversation is what I made reference to about the person that I spoke with um, as it relates to the leak. Oh. Oh. The former MP? Yes. Oh. I see. So, Connie? I'm here. Where are you this morning in terms of how you manage manage this entire thing and extricate yourself from this? Because people, as you have admitted, they're getting the tweets and getting the WhatsApp messages, the comments on YouTube. 
people are going after you. Well, um... Can you tell I, me that I, after I, the break? After the break. Okay. Yeah. So, Connie? Yes. First of all, how are you going to extricate? Because you are seeing as untrustworthy. I can't repeat some of the words. How do you respond to those people? I, um, you know, I, I, I will accept um, the, the sentiments of persons because when you don't have the whole story, then um, you're at liberty to form your conclusion from what you have. Um, the persons who know me personally, um, they have been surrounding me with support and they have um, told me outright in my community everywhere that, you know, this is just raw politics, you know, and it's just being, it's just being um, blown out of proportion because they don't hear anything that is of any real concern. But, you know, the truth is that something happened and um, it was bad judgment on my part and I was just being a friend to my friend because I do believe that after every internal election, I must not lose my friend. Mm -hmm. But I think I, um, um, I will deal with that because my character is bigger than a voice note that went out. Mm -hmm. And in terms of what you do in the PNP, are you a PNP activist at what level? Well, I, yes, I'm a PNP activist I'm a, and I'm a group chairman. I'm a former division chair. Um, so yes, in which I, constituency? It's rural in Dallas division. Oh, that's where Mr. Crawford was member of parliament. Yes. Ah, oh, so that's where you first met him politically. No, I actually know um, Damian from he was on campus through Ohio. Mm -hmm. So you would say he's a friend. He is my friend. And he would come to you as his friend. Yes, he would. So you let down your friend? I did, but not in an intentional way. Uh huh. How are you going to repair that relationship? Well, as I said before, myself and Damien, we speak. Um, we speak right through. I mean, I, I gave him a joke, you know, that I went to the Delhi in, in Sovereign. Um, Cafe Blue and some persons were there having the, the discussion of the elite Crawford and the young lady, you know, when I heard what she said, um, she said that, why for the she, you know, should I, should I get some white for her person? And I sat there and I was, I, I, you know, I, I was so struck, you know, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. But when I was leaving, I just walked over and said, and you would have killed that person innocently. And, you know, she looked at me, you know, I, you know, Damien, you know, he said he doesn't want me to be going through these kind of things. He just wants to get it over with. Um, but he has always been insisting that I need to tell my side of the story. I do believe in my party. I do believe it, that the principles that exist in my party, that this thing, I should have given it some time for the party to deal with it. But because of what is constantly happening in the, in the in the public space, I decided that I think I can't wait any longer. I probably need to go shed some light on it and we start the healing process. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in, in, in those screenshots with the conversation, did you record Peter Bunting as well? Um, I had no conversation with him on phone. Oh. On my con I, met, I met with him in person. Uh -huh. Yes. And... Uh, Given the damage done to Damien Crawford and his political prospects now, do you think he can recover from this? Damien will recover. Damien is naturally loved. Um, Damien has an ability to connect with people. Um, he will get through this. I will be right beside him through the process. I have no intention of going anywhere and he has no intention of pushing me out anywhere. But what, we, what is important is how we, we deal with our issues inside the PNP as a party, that no matter what the issues are, it must be dealt with, and the, the truth must always prevail. And I, I, while I am sorry for everything that happened, I stand by the truth, and I stand by my principle that I will never let down my friends. But now there is this kissing that is widening in the party. Damien 
while being sympathetic to Golding, is virtually at war with Bunting, how will you all bridge that yawning gap, that gulf between these two factions in the party, Connie? I think our party will get passed and over over the coming weeks. Um, I'm almost sure a lot of the healing process will start, but that is something for the party to address and for some of us as party supporters to understand that our democracy, there's nothing wrong with, with us exercising our democracy of choice and leadership. What has been happening is that persons believe that once you don't support one side, you are, you are against the next side or you're against an individual. And we need to lift the standard where our party members recognize that the choice of somebody is not the dislike of another person. So I, I, I am confident that Comrade Peter Bunting and Comrade Damian will come together and the entire party and pull things together and let the PNP be the party that the nation used to recognize as, as the party that knows how to manage internal issues, national and national issues. But how are you going to get past the bitterness and the lack of trust? The lack of trust, the enmity. Yeah? People can't talk to people now without being fearful that they're being recorded, they're being taped. Well, um, it, it, it will pass. It will pass. Um, I don't think that's a big issue in the, in the party. I mean, as I said, for those who know me, it's not a secret. It's not, it's not something that you, you do as a secret to you as a witch hunt. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, there would have been many witch hunts. But um, as it relates to this one, this is a genuine miscalculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Connie. Thanks for sharing with us. Appreciate it. <laughs>